Let's try and talk about one of the most interesting companies in gaming today in under 10 minutes. Riot Games. Even if you haven't played League of Legends, or Valorant, or any of the other properties and spin-offs, maybe you've watched the Netflix series Arcane, or maybe you've heard one of their really popular songs they've published featuring Imagine Dragons, Lil Nas, or even Zed. They also have a book. And they bring all that together with incredible live sports. In fact, over hundreds of millions of people have tuned in to watch their competitive gamers play their properties. Why am I getting so excited about this? Well, just crazy because they have hundreds of characters and they're managing to tell such detailed stories about different sections of their own worlds that they're building. Having done so in not just gaming, but brought that gaming world to animated series and even incorporating music and novels, it's really clear that they have enduring IP, not only that their fans like and love, but that's going to be something they can keep producing into new forms of media, send on new distribution channels, and ultimately propel new games. In this video, we're gonna try and talk about Riot's games, music, what they're doing with TV, and of course, we have to touch on esports. Games. Riot above all is famous for League of Legends. They developed this game and released the beta in 2008, full release in 2009, and now have had it seeding ever since, over a decade of consistent gameplay. League of Legends is a multiplayer online battle arena game where you have two teams of five, each person playing different characters, generally functioning with different unique abilities. The purpose of the game is really to take possession of the map and take down the opponent's tower. The idea though, is that throughout the game, you're earning points, you're buying with your XP, different items, different upgrades. After that game is complete, it resets and you're just going to restart. So that's even more important when you think of how long that game has actually lasted. To be a decades long game where you haven't adjusted too much of the core concept. In April, 2009, when Riot released the beta, they had 17 characters. When they fully released the product, they released it with 40 characters in October of 2009. Now, over a decade later, into 2023, we have over 150 champions to play. Each of these champions have different backstories, different relationships with the other champions, and we're really starting to see this merge in the Riot lore that is now being translated into new media. League of Legends became really popular really quick. They already were borrowing some really popular kind of gameplay fundamentals from something called Dota Defense of the Agents, which was a mod of StarCraft 3. Now, with a proven sort of gameplay mechanics, they started making their own twists, not just on new characters and IP, but also eventually a business model. For an idea on popularity, in 2011, barely two years after League of Legends came out, Riot regularly had 15 million players online. Fast forwarding eight years to 2019, it was said that League of Legends was concurrently and regularly peaking at about 8 million players. And it's not like other companies stopped during those eight years. We saw various Call of Duties, we saw the introduction of Fortnite and Warzone and Pub Battlegrounds. In fact, the entire field of Battle Royale was released and was massively popular. We also had Minecraft, of course, and Roblox taking massive parts of the younger users. It's such a fantastic tale to think about Riot keeping a pretty consistent game across these years that had such a consistent fan base that they could keep selling into that and keep expanding it further. And this brings us to the business model. Riot was so particular and really revolutionary in bringing together free to play at this sort of desktop and console type game. Instead of paying the classic $60 for a disc, Riot made a free to play model where they would sell skins and cosmetic of items and apparel. These skins would be anywhere from four to $25 each and ultimately accrue mass revenue over time. In fact, it's said that Riot has generated over 20 billion in revenue from this method. One of the latest articles from 2020 said Riot made about $1.75 billion this way. Now, just for a quick preference, Riot is a private game that's owned by Tencent, a major Chinese conglomerate, and it's a little difficult to find some of the data, so we're just gonna have to take their word on a lot of these metrics, not Riot's word, but those analyzing their game. The crazy thing is, is Riot is still going strong with League of Legends from 2009 into 2023. 2023. League of Legends remains so popular, it's said that about 150 million people are active, and about 1 million people play daily. If a forever game like League of Legends wasn't enough, 
Riot went on to develop Valorant, 5 vs 5 tactical shooter where you play as different characters with each unique abilities and a variety of game modes. It's something that I personally don't know too much about, but has and attracted a pretty large esports audience and definitely has a notable player base. It's said that about 20 million people regularly play Valorant, and at any given day, there's about 5 million active users. Keep in mind, when League of Legends originally launched in 2009, this was still very early days of the smartphone. It didn't have really the connectivity or even graphics processing power to be able to handle these types of games. So you have to think of as things progressed, Riot was very cognizant of this and eventually releases a mobile game. And Riot really has been fantastic at adapting their IP to the mobile platform. Now, Riot also taps into different types of games, such as a trading card game, as well as the mobile version of League of Legends, and probably pretty importantly, a new fighter coming out, but even crazier, a larger MMO is said to be in the works. Gaming and music go hand in hand. And if you're Riot and hosting the largest esports events in person in the world, well, likely you have a big event that you might want to have a music element too. But what Riot has done with music is so incredibly over top, it really needs to be pointed out. They've not only published music for some of the top musicians, they've also created virtual groups and virtual acts that are based on some of the characters in their games. And that right there is such a beautiful extension of what they've been able to do with their lore and bringing visual stories to these characters that you're playing, basically attracting more and more interest in the community and in the story. Riot's Spotify alone reaches 19 million people per month. Enemy, featuring Imagine Dragons, has over 1.1 billion streams. And the League of Legends YouTube channel has over 15 million subscribers, often those listening to the music. But again, what Riot is doing that's so unique is really extending their IP to totally new and pretty much first done concepts, such as this virtual music group. Now, Riot has three of these groups. They started with Pentakill, which was spun off the idea of making a rock star metal band type skin, just as the cosmetics we talked about earlier that players could equip and show off in game. Pentakill put out two albums, both chopping various charts for metal. Maybe the metal didn't quite find its niche. And of course that actual metal audience is much smaller than greater pop. And especially this new rising interest in K-pop in the West. So what does Riot do? They create a new group. They create KDA. KDA is a four character pop group composed of actual characters in League of Legends. Now, these virtual characters are actually sort of sung and acted by real world artists, Madison Beer and Jaira Burns, and two massive K-pop stars under the G-Idol group. Adding to the 19 million regular listeners for Riot's main channel, they have this group KDA with over 3 million monthly active streams. KDA was truly a sensation and really extended the brand well. In fact, their debut song, Pop Stars, managed to rack up 100 million views in its first month on YouTube and now sits at around 550 million. What's more is that there's an entire album, super well composed, that sounds awesome. And both of these groups, Pentakill and KDA, have this amazing animation component to it. And you can really tell that this is where Riot is bringing in their expertise or at least finding the right partners to work with and tell this story in a narrative that not only fits the lore of their in-game characters, but is something that aesthetically resonates with their core fan base. And after KDA's success, Riot wanted to explore further with the addition of True Damage. This would be more of a hip hop focused group. It doesn't seem that there's been too much progress there and overall, all three of these groups have halted, but Riot is definitely still focused on music publishing and we can expect them to keep going further and further with this style. Beyond music, there's TV. And this is truly captivating. This was actually my first experience really with the Riot brand in the animated series and actually Emmy award-winning series, Arcane on Netflix. This is now going into its second season. And for quick context on that Emmy award, well, for animation, The Simpsons have racked up 11 Emmys and South Park 5. So you're truly competing with a giant and Arcane was the first streaming series to do so. Launching in November of 2011, Arcane hit the number two spot, the following week number one, and then maintained a top 10 for quite a few weeks, regularly racking in about 30 million views. Netflix reported, and I'm reading off the screen here, 34 million on that first week as they debuted as number two, 
38 million hours watched on that second week, debuting number one, 29.6 million the following week at number four, 18.1 million at number five, number seven at 13.4, number nine at 10 million. And that roughly correlates with when the series was probably watched. And considering the Netflix binge watch model, that's a pretty important thing to measure in. Now, what's so special about this, not only the art, style, music, and actual story behind Arcane, it's that it's really extending these characters and the greater League of Legends world, exploring an area called Piltover and exploring important characters like Jinx, Vi, Jace. Just like gaming extended successfully into media with The Witcher and The Last of Us, what we've seen recently with Mario, we can expect to see more and more of this type of content from Riot and expect such a high level of quality given the type of talent they have there and the kind of stories and characters they're working with. Again, keep in mind, there's a library of over 150 characters in League of Legends alone. And with Riot, we can't stop before we talk about esports. This is truly incredible and something that we got maybe a little ahead of our skis on thinking of the general trend, but no doubt has, has the viewership that can't be ignored. Riot has really pushed competitive gaming forward with League of Legends and Valorant. There's over 100 teams that are competing in League of Legends. What's really special is Riot doesn't view esports as a way to acquire new customers, acquire new users and players of their game. They really see it as an extension and a way to enhance the fandom and community around these games. And part of that reason is, is unlike traditional broadcasting, these games are complex, and if you don't really understand the mechanics of how League of Legends works around each individual character and their unique ability, as well as the more advanced strategies, let's keep in mind there's coaches for these teams, and there's deep practice and strategy sessions to figure out new ways and new metas so you can compete more effectively. None of that is simple, so it doesn't lend well to this new and casual viewership. Nonetheless, the scale is massive. Reading that the 2021 Worlds, so the World Finals for the League Cup Series, the League Championship Series, peaked at a concurrent viewership of nearly 74 million fans with an average minute audience of nearly 31 million people. Now that's regular. That's something that they had done basically the year before that they'll probably do the year after. What's crazy and where Riot highlights himself as an impressive company, as this game and as this sport and esports doesn't lend itself super well to traditional broadcasting, it also doesn't in fact lend itself that well to working with streaming partners like Twitch and YouTube. The reason is, is because it's a little more difficult for those brands to monetize, those large streaming platform providers, so there's kind of an ad share split and it's a little bit low value. Thus, Riot has created their own system, their own watch platform. And while that might seem like it just embeds Twitch or YouTube, it allows a user to log in and start receiving wards and receiving actual marketing activation from those brands. So now that custom cosmetic skin from this unique one-time event can be purchased directly, interacted with directly, and brands have a very clear attribution to what they're doing when they're working with Riot for specific gaming events like this. That number is as much as 40% of the overall viewer traffic can be attributed to Riot's watch platform. And just so you have an idea, these one-time skins are no joke. In fact, three of the top six all-time best-selling skins in League of Legends comes from one of their esports events. In Valorant as well, the other esports property that Riot has made 42 million in one championship series selling these same types of cosmetics. The best part is that big percent of that revenue is generated right back to the team. It says as much as 50%. We can't not highlight some special mentions and some arguable speculation. The world of Runeterra, the League of Legends universe, has been around for over two decades. And we've seen that 17 initial characters, 40 upon early release, or sorry, official release, all the way to over 150, we can really expect them to expand more and more, including varying into new different types of games. And the reason lore and character arcs are so important is it really gives you an extension into interacting with your biggest fans in your community. If you think about Star Wars for one moment, they've largely let in the Star Wars universe write itself. That unique type of engagement and story writing lets the fans take things further. 
and with social media as it is today, especially YouTube, you often get speculation and a lot of pre-release talk before you possibly even had an announcement. Let's take the rise of Skywalker in Star Wars as a perfect example. There was so much speculation of who would be this enemy character. People were wondering, maybe it's a new Sith Lord, maybe it's someone that comes from the various Star Wars lore. And in fact, many people guessed it right. It was this Commander Snoke talked about in various books, alluded to in various other forms of media related to Star Wars. Now, there's even a crazy theory that fans have elaborated on saying Jar Jar Binks, the clumsy character, the clumsy Gundam in Star Wars, is in fact a Sith Lord himself. And what we're seeing today with the release of Diablo 4, so much promotional opportunity to tell a greater story, to bring in new music, to really try and get this pre-release hype done through not paid ads necessarily, but allowing your community to engage and get a better appreciation for the kind of art, thoughts, storytelling that goes behind these games because it's not always about combat. Blizzard, for example, has released a more than three-part storytelling of just exactly this Diablo world and how it became to be. They've also released a live-action quick trailer that probably cost many hundreds of thousands because it is super high quality. And a song with Halsey is imminent. So all this storytelling, the novel, the TV series, the music publishing, the building of lore in the Riot universe, it really points to what seems to be probably the biggest or better yet, definitely the biggest project. And that is the rumors and basically confirmation of Riot's MMO. So I can't pretend that I have a bunch of details but it really is the natural culmination of all these storytelling pieces into something that is going to be a more extended play. And while MMO is quite different from MMORPG, like a World of Warcraft, it'll be determined and very likely that characters will be able to expand and that the Riot fans are going to be able to take this to the next level, not just because Riot has an incredibly talented group of developers, storytellers, artists, but because they have such an engaged and bought-in user base. Now, so you have an idea quickly on MMORPGs, World of Warcraft and even RuneScape have been around for over a decade, and they re-released their initial versions so that nostalgia could set back in and people could replay them in their original states. These games have a tremendous staying power. World of Warcraft has crazy numbers. At its peak in 2010, there was over 12 million subscribers. And if you think about it, these subscribers were paying $15 a month in US markets. Quick math is that is 180 million recurring revenue dollars each month. Now I'm sure there was some geography differences, but either way, you can quickly see where that is. In 2014, World of Warcraft had over 100 million accounts. And in 2017, or up to this point, it was said that World of Warcraft had grossed over 9.23 billion in revenue. Now I heard the Riot founders a few years ago suggest that they've probably eclipsed 20 billion. And their model is super unique being the free to play cosmetic side. But now, what if you started thinking about something that was maybe designed to be more perpetual and subscriber-based, just as a World of Warcraft? Now, I won't speculate on their model, but it would be incredibly interesting if they could blend the two, or better yet, if they were confident enough to go the free-to-play route completely, relying on skins again. So, it's not really clear where this project is, but it's definitely clear that it's in the works, there's jobs posting about it, and plenty of these same YouTube speculators are making vids and looking into any detail possible. What is amazing about that is they're looking across the lore and speculating how a story could be told, what maps, what regions, what characters could be involved. Finally, as we look to bottom line, we scratch the surface of Riot's complexity. They have an amazing gaming operation that's probably eclipsed over 20 billion. They have hundreds of millions of live entertainment fans. They have an Emmy award-winning animation series, over 20 million monthly streams, and hundreds of millions of watches on their YouTube videos for their music publications. And they're still going really strong and looking into new ways to utilize their amazing story, their amazing art, and their amazing fan base. So if you enjoyed this video, I would love feedback. I would love to understand maybe where we could go to elaborate on this topic more and really show your love and give a quick look into some of these games and definitely watch the Arcane series, throw on KDA, appreciate the art form and how gaming is influencing so many other parts of entertainment. That's all for this video. Thank you again. Take care.